In three, two, one. Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart Seven. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 10th of November, and it's Sesame Street Day. And a big happy birthday to Hugh Bonneville, Ellen Pompeo, Tim Rice, and Taryn Egerton. There were 33,117 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and 262 additional deaths. And after much speculation, Health Secretary Sajid Javid finally confirmed that frontline NHS workers in England will have to be vaccinated by April in order to keep their jobs. The weight of the data shows our vaccinations have kept people safe and they have saved lives. We must avoid preventable harm and protect patients in the NHS, protect colleagues in the NHS and, of course, protect the NHS itself. A YouGov poll says that 78% of Britons support the idea of making a double vaccination a requirement for NHS workers, and Labour's Shadow Health Secretary Jonathan Ashworth welcomed the move, but expressed concerns about the potential impact on NHS staffing. There will be anxiety at trust level that a policy, however laudable in principle, could exacerbate some of these chronic understaffing problems, we simply can afford not afford to lose thousands of NHS staff overnight. The focus of the Tory sleaze row shifted on Tuesday to those MPs with lucrative second and in some cases third jobs. The spotlight in particular was on MP and former Attorney General Sir Geoffrey Cox, who spent some of the pandemic doing legal work in the British Virgin Islands and getting £700,000 for his troubles. Labour's demanded an investigation and party chair Annalise Dodds says it's time for the Prime Minister to act. They're concerned about this corruption scandal that's getting deeper and deeper. We're seeing more and more instances of behaviour that most people would view as beyond the pale and a Conservative Prime Minister who is refusing to take action. Sir Geoffrey hasn't actually broken any rules as he declared all of his extra work in the Members' Register of Interests, but Downing Street issued a statement saying that MPs should be visible to their constituents and should be available to help with constituency matters. Deputy Prime Minister Dominic out of office Raab was sent out to not apologise on the morning talk shows. Well, ultimately, uh, there, there are clear rules on what needs to be declared. In terms of accountability, it'll be up to voters to decide uh, whether their MP representing them um, is uh, got the right priorities, and uh, that's the same for all of us. Tuesday at the COP26 Climate Summit was focused on gender and science and innovation, with a delegation from the US Congress joining leaders in Glasgow. They included Nancy Pelosi and high-profile New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, better known as AOC, and she was feeling positive about the new US outlook. America is back. When we say that the United States is back, it's not just that we're back in the way that the United States was pursuing climate policy before. It is different. And I would argue that it's a fundamentally different approach. And she recognised that the last four years damaged the US's moral authority and climate change as Donald Trump withdrew the US from the Paris Accord and refused to engage on the climate crisis. We have to actually deliver the action in order to get the respect and authority internationally to get the credit. Uh, We have to draw down emissions to get credit for being committed on climate change. It's really that simple. There was some good news for Man United for a change yesterday as their striker Marcus Rashford was the proud recipient of an MBE from Prince William. The 24-year-old was recognised for services to vulnerable children after his high-profile campaign over free school meal vouchers. He's not done campaigning though, although he is hopeful there might be an end in sight for childhood poverty. Hopefully everything should be in place by the time I retire. (laughs) Whilst I'm still playing, I'll still be doing it and... Hopefully we can find a, a cause to the problem and, and eradicate it. He was accompanied to Windsor Castle by his mum, Melanie, and as usual, he knew exactly where the award would be going. Any awards that I've got really from the, the charitable things that I've been doing, including this one, it will, they're all in her house, um, and this one will go in her house as well. Still to come on the Smart 7, great news for Squid Game fans and tributes to actor Dean Stockwell, right after this. You're listening to the Smart 7. If you're enjoying it, you might also like the Smart 7 Island Edition. Just search and follow us on your favourite podcast platform. Three, two, one. Nicola Adams has always been a trailblazer. She became the first female boxer to win an Olympic gold in London 2012 and the first double Olympic champion when she won gold again in Rio. 
She's undefeated as a professional boxer and held the WBO female flyweight title. She was also part of the first same-sex couple on Strictly. It's a remarkable life and career, and now she's opened up on the struggle she went through to get success in a new Amazon Prime documentary that drops this weekend called Lioness, The Nicola Adams Story. The boxing ring was less dangerous than being at home. She wanted to be strong physically, mentally. She wanted to protect herself, protect her mum. Nikki's witnessed a lot of violence. It's a lot for a kid to check in. I was fighting for everything. I was fighting to survive. If you've been having red light, green light dreams and wondering if and when the hit Korean show Squid Game might return, here's some good news for you. The cast and director appeared at a press event in Los Angeles and director Hwang Dong Hyuk had some good news. Although it's still at early stages, he says he's working on a plan for series two. Uh, Kion will come back, he'll do something for the world. Young Ho Hyun, who played number 67, says the success of the show has been an amazing experience. When I came through the immigration center, the open officer asked me autograph like the very beginning of this journey with the autograph <laughs> so it was like amazing The death was announced on Tuesday of Dean Stockwell, a star of both TV and movies and perhaps most famous for the time travelling hologram character Al in Quantum Leap he started as a child star with Frank Sinatra, won Best Actor a number of times at the Cannes Film Festival, then dropped out to become a hippie, before returning with a role in the original Dune and an iconic lip-syncing moment in David Lynch's Blue Velvet. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Married to the Mob and also appeared in Star Trek Enterprise and Battlestar Galactica. He was 85 years old. Rest in peace, Dean. I saw a star explode and send out the building blocks of the universe. And you know how I perceived one of the most glorious events in the universe? With these ridiculous gelatinous orbs in my skull. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.